So uh, I've been a marketing professional for most of my career and I've spent the last couple of years trying to build a food tech startup. Uh, I understood very early on that I had a slightly non-traditional background. When I actually had my first conversation with you, uh, I think in the first three or four minutes, I was fairly sure that, you know, I was going ahead with this because, and also I've seen, uh, you know, one of my friend also had, uh, you know, taken uh, services from Lilac Buds and he has achieved, uh, you know, his MBA schools. And I know that you guys work with a lot of these top MBA schools. So it was important for me that I work with somebody who uh, had a good success rate in uh, the schools that I was applying to. Hey, Sujan. Hi. Hello. Hi, Priyesh. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for taking the time to do the testimonial today with me. Excited to share your story about applying to B schools and getting these top admits with our future prospective applicants as well. So, Sujana, let's start with the basics. Uh, just can you share a little bit of your background before you start thinking about an MBA? and what got you to Lilac Bats? Absolutely. So uh, I've been a marketing professional for most of my career and I've spent the last couple of years trying to build a food tech startup. And during that journey, I wanted to kind of explore further in terms of growing and scaling tech startups. And that's kind of been the motivation of wanting to pursue an MBA because I wanted to also be close to other entrepreneurs from different countries and have that sense of community. Uh, so that has been the motivation and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Lilac but has helped me uh, in uh, you know kind of going forward with my MBA application process and uh, yeah that's why I'm here yes of course and you as as every applicant who's just starting out thinking about MBA applications take yourself back rewind yourself back eight to ten months when you connected with us you know what was your thought process at that point in terms of your key questions that you had that you wanted a consultant to help you with? Yeah, absolutely. So for me, uh, I think uh, I understood very early on that I had a slightly non-traditional background and it was important for me that I partnered with a consultant who was able to kind of work with me in putting a more authentic story uh, and highlight some of my uh, you know achievements and talk about how uh, I want to use an MBA. So having that story uh, and uh, you know having that story right was important to me and that's kind of what I had in mind when I started off and I also wanted to work with somebody who had my best interests at uh, at mind and you know who knew how to kind of guide me through what were like the best schools and also kind of uh, uh, you know give me uh, understanding acknowledgement on whether what I had in my mind was true or not because I had just started my journey and obviously consultants would have done it over and over again so that's kind of my uh, that these were some of my ideas when I was looking for a consultant and some of the people that I spoke to had more uh, you know general idea gen a very generalistic view on most of the applications and some of them were even sp speaking about the number of uh, MBA applications that you know they wanted to kind of apply to but I kind of wanted to go with more quality rather than quantity I was okay with applying to less number of schools but I wanted to make sure that I gave my absolute best and so when I actually had my first conversation with you uh, I think in the first First three or four minutes, I was fairly sure that you know I was going ahead with this because I felt like uh, when I introduced myself and I spoke about my background, you were you were very uh, you already had like some really good points on how we could kind of take it forward, um, and we already started that discussion, and so that gave me quite a bit of confidence. And also, I've seen uh, you know one of my friend also had uh, you know taken uh, services from Lilac Buds, and he has achieved uh, you know his MBA schools, and I know that you guys work with a lot of these top MBA schools. So it was important for me that I work with somebody who uh, had a good success rate in uh, the schools that I was applying to. And so these were some reasons uh, why, you know, I was very clear in our first conversation that, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of take it forward. Ooh, thank you. Thank you for that. Srijana, moving on, can you tell our audience what schools you applied to and where have you got admitted with scholarships? 
Yes. So I did apply to UCLA, uh, USC, uh, and uh, UC Berkeley in California, and then um, I also applied to Carnegie Mellon, uh, Columbia, and NYU. So a bit on the West Coast as well as in the East Coast, and I did get into Carnegie Mellon, USC, and UCLA with scholarships uh, of sixty uh, thousand, um, and I finally decided to go ahead with uh, UCLA. Awesome. So. The West Coast. That's the that's the region that you'll be going to. Given your goals that you had in mind, what was your key goal that you identified? We went through this whole process of introspecting on your strengths, your weaknesses. Where what are your development areas that you want to be school to plug for you? Through that process, you identified who you want to become. Uh, and why you are applying to these specific list of schools? Talk us through that process a little bit. What you identified, what you introspected on, and you know what is the goal that you have in mind as you enter B school? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, one thing that I'd like to say is through my process of wanting to pursue an MBA to actually doing my applications to now getting a seat, I feel like a lot of them have evolved for the better. They've just like uh, fine tuned, and thanks to you for that. So when I initially started, like I said, I kind of wanted to. Uh, get deeper into the aspects of growing and scaling startups, and be close to uh, a good, uh, a strong technology hub. Um, and so uh, I knew that I wanted to go into a place that uh, it was in close vicinity with uh, a strong tech hub, and also be in a school that has a strong technology wing. Uh, and so that's kind of how I started my process of looking into some schools. But I think after talking to you, that just uh, you know I was able to kind of refine it further, and uh, you know. Uh, I must say that you guys have been very patient with me because I remember we did a lot of, you know, back and forth in terms of uh, the storyline and all of it, and trying to refine it further and further. So I feel like that process also really helped me uh, be a little more reflective than I would would have been otherwise about the process. And so, uh, you know. And so that process really, really helped me. And uh, I, like I said, UCLA. The reason why I chose it is because a, it has a very, it's close to Silicon Valley, of course. And uh, I, I want to get into product management because I saw a lot of parallels between entrepreneurship and product management. And I felt like that would be a great place for me to kind of get that hands-on experience before I revisit it uh, sometime in the future, or even uh, you know, kind of uh, be part of a startup as well. I felt like that product management. Experience would be very helpful, and so I felt UCLA would be the best choice for me. Um, so yeah. How I mean, how would you reflect back on the interactions, the ease of connecting with mentors, the yeah. the collaboration on your essays, the back and forth on the storylines? What were your expectations from us, and how were they satisfied through the whole application process? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, for me, like you know, I uh, like I said, I wanted to make sure that you know I was uh, in the best hands, and I knew that you know I had this full support from uh, you know consultancy that would help me reach my goals. And I think I was very well assured from the beginning for multiple reasons. I think one, the great thing about Lilac Buds is that it actually assigns you with mentors that are in MBA schools and have that very freshly finished that application process, right? So for example, I was partnered with Utkarsh who. is currently an mba student at booth and he had done that process like right before uh, uh, you know like a year ago so he's been he's very fresh into the process and so he had very good insights in terms of and it, it also was reassuring for me to kind of partner with him so i kind of had that uh, understanding that the route that i was taking was right and uh, i think uh, that you know i i think i on an average i must have had more meetings uh, than uh, you know another student because i had so much to discuss and i had so many questions and luckily utkarsh was also into getting into product management and i think that's kind of how you group students based on what their goal is and you map them to the right mentor so uh, during our uh, story sessions i also had discussions on what product management was and how it's like to have a day to day so that's kind of an added advantage when you get to speak with uh, somebody there uh and um, people i mean i would say you yourself as well as utkarsh were very very accessible um and uh, i was able to kind of quickly schedule a meeting get on a call and have very productive meetings because i remember you know we would always have an agenda and we would always stick to the point and uh, you know finish our calls i think being an entrepreneur it is important to kind of manage your time really well and you know everyone were very mindful and you know we were very to the point uh, having very productive discussions as well 
well so i felt like you know i was in a good place by the time i was maybe like a month away from my submissions or 15 days away from my submissions i felt like i was confident and i was happy about my story uh, you know in in the application perfect thank you so if, since you, okay so sojana you were applying to all schools in round 2 were you worried about scholarships were you worried about not getting any scholarships what was your key thought process as you selected round 2 to go for you know applying to all eight programs in one round that's a heavy duty amount of work a lot of essays to write definitely a lot of pressure to keep things moving at a healthy pace two months prior to deadlines you had a very tight deadline lots of meetings of course with us but more importantly a lot of thinking to do for each essay uh, what would what would your advice be to applicants who are thinking around to what kind of worries you had how did you you know resolve them and how did you manage your timelines yeah so for me i think i was very clear that uh, it was important for me to have a quality application rather than applying early and not have like a half uh, you know like a not so great application so i knew that round 1 might not be the best timeline for me and that is why i very consciously chose round 2 and i felt like by that time i'll still be able to give my best and uh, when i looked at a lot of uh, you know uh, material on the internet and i had a lot of conversations with you guys as well i felt like round 2 is still not late i feel like round 1 and round 2 uh, yes round 1 people get more scholarship but round 2 also uh, you know is still a very uh, good place to kind of apply to and so when it comes to that i wasn't uh, you know really afraid and uh, i knew that you know if you put your best application forward and the fact that you know i come from a non traditional background i think i knew my strengths and i knew how unique my story was so uh, i uh, and i think i was also not very bothered about scholarships at that point i really wanted to get as many schools as possible and just give my best and uh, i later of course i was lucky enough to get uh, you know the scholarships that i did but i think getting into it uh, i remember you guys also told me first you know the first thing is to get your foot in the door and let's think about scholarships later and i yes. think that also simplifies a lot of things in your head because sometimes you're already so busy so you won't be able to like think about everything at once so it's always better you just give your best foot forward and just be prepared as much as you can and i think that will then then turn out into uh, you know the best outcome for you okay perfect okay final words of uh, wisdom from the entire experience of applying to an mba uh, what what should be done by a prospective applicant now looking at the likes of a ucla usc berkeley nyu uh, what do you think would be two things you would tell them now that you reflect back on your own journey uh, through the questions through the you know complex decision making process how should they go about it what should they definitely keep in mind as they keep moving forward yeah i think there are more than two things but i'm just going to limit myself to things like you said i think first thing it's important that you start early because i feel that gives you enough time for you to do a lot of research and understand what are the schools that you're interested in and also have like a really good understanding of what is that you've been doing so far and what is that is lacking you to kind of pursue an mba and how you think your post mba will kind of connect to uh, you know how mba fits into that missing piece of what is that you want to do in your career i think having that storyline uh, briefly in your mind definitely sets you up for success because i think that is the genesis of what kind of schools you want to go to and what kind of programs you want to do and i think it's also advantageous if you also speak to a few people from these universities most of them are fairly open if it's not like a busy period for them i think it's always advisable you get in touch with them and i think the second most important thing is it's it really helped me working with a with uh, with a consultant for sure because and also choosing the right right consultancy i think is very very important because i think that sometimes can be a bit of a make or break in situations where you're not fully aware of the process uh for instance uh when i spoke to a different consultancy they had given me a completely different set of uh universities that i can apply to and at that point since i was not into the journey i was like okay maybe this is this is what i can get with the credentials that i have but when i started speaking to better consultancies that had a higher success rate of working with the top schools you really understand what is that you can truly achieve so i think choosing the right person to work with is extremely important because those are the people that can actually put you in the right track in terms of how you can achieve some of these goals and when you start early what happens also which obviously didn't happen in my case but i think if you start a little early i think you guys can also tell us what are some of the things that we can quickly work on to better our chances into getting into better schools 
so uh, yeah i i think these are the two things that uh, i feel are important super thank you so srujna going through the application process you of course got multiple interview invites walk us through the whole interview preparation and the video essays and video interview mocks that you did with us what was that experience like and you know uh, how did you feel prepared as you walked into the live final interviews with the schools that you applied to yeah so uh, i think that the process up until the interview uh, has certainly you know set the stage a little bit for the next steps because by then you would have done your research on your story and why mba and why do you think mba is the missing piece and post mba so i feel like a lot of those uh, anecdotes will definitely be helpful for you from an interview perspective uh, but then i also think that uh, at this point i think it's important to also understand what are the usps of every single school that you are applying to and just really going through the website and even talking to some of the current students there is going to help you understand even for yourself as to why that school is right for you and also to justify to the interview as to why you will be a good fit uh, and how this uh, program is going to help you so i think having that uh, clarity uh, for each and every school that you have an interview for is extremely important um, and uh, uh, having that clarity is obviously important for them to give you a seat and also for you to understand which college you're going to choose at the end of the day and i think secondly some of the colleges have pre recorded interviews and i think personally for me that was a little i was a little anxious about that because i've never done that before and uh, uh, and so i felt like maybe that was something that i should have like practiced quite a few times before but luckily uh, you know i uh, you know that uh, lilac but also has this amazing uh, portal where you have you have this option of doing all these practice courses and those practice those videos are actually reviewed by you and also the men, uh, our mentor and so i think having those feedbacks from them uh, also helps you kind of fast track the journey of perfecting your answers a little bit uh, so yeah uh, like i said, I think having a one-on-one -on -one interview is always better, at least for me. Uh, but people that are not very comfortable with the pre-recorded interviews, I think having lilac buds and practicing with that, uh, I think really, really helps. Yes. Cool. Thank you so much, Rujna, for taking the time to do the testimonial today. Lovely to help you through the whole journey, and wishing you the best as you start into this new journey at UCLA. And look forward to staying in touch. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pejal. Pleasure working with you and knowing you for the past few months. Thank you. Thank you.